Ciao friends and welcome to a new video from SQL BI. In this video, I want to look with you at how DAX executes one very simple statement, the if statement. Now DAX has a very unique behavior. Whenever you think DAX is executing some piece of code, it's actually not doing exactly what you think. It's very counterintuitive. That is part of what makes a DAX so fascinating. So understanding how the formula that you write is actually translated into simpler instruction executed by the storage engine, the engine that actually accesses the data and computes your values, is uh, extremely useful because it gives you a lot of uh, hints and ideas about how to write better DAX code. So in this video, I'm going to write a very simple if statement, and then we will look together exactly how the DAX engine executes your code in order to start understanding a bit better about the internals of DAX. Let's get started. I have this very simple report that is slicing the sales amount by brand, and I already created a measure, discounted sales, that executes a very simple if statement. It checks if the sales amount is greater than 1 million, then it computes the sales amount multiplied by some discount, so only 5% of discount, Otherwise, if the value is not greater than 1 million, it returns the sales amount itself. And as soon as I put the measure inside the, my matrix, it computes the correct number. There's nothing fancy, nothing complicated here. But the thing is, how does DAX execute this code? Because what I wrote is a function. And the most natural idea, what people typically think about DAX, and actually that's exactly the way we explain it because it's very intuitive, is that in order to build this report, the engine will compute the sales amount sliced by brand. So it basically computes uh, uh, this part of the query. And once it has uh, the sales amount for a datum for adventure works, then it runs uh, row by row on the result set and it computes uh, the formula discounted sales for every row. So it already knows the sales amount, it checks if that is greater than 1 million, it returns the sales amount multiplied by 0.95 or the sales amount. So the execution is divided into two steps. First, gather the sales amount by brand. Second, execute the code row by row. If you think about that, that is not an optimal path. Because uh, if you have uh, 10 brands, uh, that means that you need to compute first the sales amount by brand, and then for 10 times you need to scan the sales table in order to compute the sales amount for every individual row. Yes, it is true that you already know the sales amount, but that is specifically for this measure, because if you look at the code, I'm using sales amount everywhere. But nothing prevents me from using different expressions, different formulas in the then branch and else branch. Therefore, it might need compute to follow a completely different path. So I might be computing the sales amount and then you compute the margin for 10 times if I have 10 brands. But what if I have 100 brands? Then the steps need to be executed 100 times or 1000 times. It is definitely not an optimal path in order to compute my expression. Therefore, DAX uses a smarter algorithm. What it does is slightly different. It says, uh, well, the formula depends on the sales amount for sure. So I will slice by brand because the report slices by brand and I will compute the sales amount by brand. But I compute the sales amount because it's one of the ingredients of the if condition. So this condition requires me to compute the sales amount. Once I have the sales amount by brand, I will evaluate just the if condition for every individual brand and I will split them into two buckets. The, back, the brands for which it holds true and the brands for which it holds false. So only the brands which are greater than 1 million, AdventureWorks, Contoso and the phone company will belong to the then branch. All the other brands will belong to the else bucket. Once I have these two buckets with just two scans of the sales table, I can compute whatever because I can use uh, the first bucket as a filter, scan sales and grab all the brands for the sales amount for all the brands where it holds true. And then a second step where I scan again the sales table and compute the sales amount for all the brands for which the condition holds false. At the end, I mix the two data sets. 
Let's take a look with the execution path if this is exactly what happens. In order to do that, I need to grab the query that fills this matrix. So let's go to Optimize, Performance Analyzer, we start recording, refresh the visual, we only have one, copy the query, and then I paste it in Dark Studio. As I always do, I simplify that a bit because I don't want all this stuff. I just want to have evaluate a summary column with the subtotal of the sales amount and the discounted sales. Let's format it, enable the server timings because I want to see exactly the queries that are executed by the storage engine. And then I run it. Let's look at the server timings together. Time is definitely not relevant because, of course, this query is going to be extremely fast. But let's look exactly at what happened. The first scan computes the sales amount slicing by brand with a join from sales. And you see there are no filters. So this query is going to return the sales amount by brand. Once I have this query, the formula engine, and it is not shown here in the server timings panel, evaluates the condition for all the brands. It knows the sales amount, it can evaluate the condition. And then it creates the two buckets. The first one contains the brands for which the condition holds true. And we see it here. You see that the next query being executed computes by brand the sum of the sales amount with a where condition that says I'm only interested in Contoso, Adventure Works, and the phone company. These are the brands in the true bucket. And then we have another query later. This is just retrieving the product brands, that's not interesting. We have this other query that computes again the sales amount slides by brand, but in the where condition we have all the remaining brands. So the entire execution happened with just three scans of the fact table. Plus, there is an additional one, the last one, that just computes the grand total. Remember, the grand total index is not computed by summing individual values unless the measure is guaranteed to be additive. It is computed through another scan of the fact table. You know, I'm not grouping by anything, I'm just computing the sum of the sales amount. So, this pattern, that of splitting the brands or whatever you are grouping by into two buckets, is optimal in many scenarios. But if you carefully think about our code, that it is not really the best option. Because in our scenario, because we're using the same expression in both branches, the then branch and the else branch, it would be better to first compute the sales amount and then use the number we already computed to, perform, to compute everything else. It turns out that you have the option of forcing DAX to pre-compute the sales amount in case you need it. And the best way to do that is to use a variable. If we just change this code, let's hide the performance analyzer, and instead of using sales amount as a measure, we create a variable. So we define a variable, sales amount, that computes my sales amount, and then we return, instead of using the measure, we just use a sales amount, the variable. How is the code different now? Well, now we are clearly telling the engine, hey, in order to compute the discounted sales, compute the sales amount, and that's one step. You need to do that. And once you have it, don't compute it again. Use it both in the condition, in the then branch, and in the else branch, the same value that we already computed. If I change the measure this way, and then I execute the very same query that I had before, I run it, let's look at the result. Now you see I no longer have all those queries. I have only one scan that computes by brand the sales amount, and then the second scan that just computes the total. And there are no longer any other execution. So I moved the execution from four storage engine query to only two storage engine queries. Does this mean that the code is running faster? Well, when you look at code that runs in seven milliseconds, numbers do not mean anything. You cannot tell that seven milliseconds is less than eight milliseconds or 10 milliseconds, they're the same number. Anything that happens on the computer will pollute that number and make it wrong. Uh, but there are many scenarios where this code is actually faster. There are, however, many scenarios in which this code is lower. It all depends on the number of rows you have in the brand, the number of values in the brand, 
the complexity of the forms that they are using, the density or the sparsity of the measure, because maybe one of the two branches is so much larger than the other one that uh, it makes sense to restrict the calculation of uh, the smaller one to only the sub the branch where it holds true. So do not draw the conclusion that uh, using variables always uh, speeds up your code. In this specific scenario, it does. There are scenarios where it does not. So it's up to you to check with uh, performance analyzer and uh, with a bit more understanding about the internals of DAX uh, whether performance will be better or not. As you have seen, DAX is kind of counterintuitive. When you think of a simple function like if, it looks like it's a simple function that just evaluates a condition and then goes one way or another way. But in order to speed up the execution and in order to find the optimal path, DAX has the freedom to change the way it executes the code depending on the way you write the DAX code. The more you know about the internals of DAX, the better DAX developer you will become, because you will understand exactly how changing your DAX code affects the execution. That means uh, performance, uh, stability, and whatever, but mainly performance in uh, this scenario. Uh, if you are curious about that, we do have a training for you. The optimizing DAX training starts from this level and goes so much deeper. You will be able to learn all the internals of the DAX code. It may be overwhelming for a lot of you, but it's incredibly interesting if this is the kind of topics that interest you. Enjoy DAX!